Hello, we are team 22012 Loose Screws from Orlando, Florida, and this is our tutorial on coaxial virtual four bars in FTC center stage. So, what is a four bar linkage? So, a four bar linkage is a mechanical linkage that utilizes four rigid bars connected by pivots. So, when one of the bars rotates, it causes for the end effect to go upwards, and the secondary bar, not the main bar, also goes up because this is shaped as a parallelogram. So the opposite sides are parallel and they respond in the same motion as each other. So the way that these bars are created is extremely helpful because it creates a mechanism which can emulate a very specific range and type of motion, which many other linkages can't do as effectively. So four bars are extremely helpful in engineering and mechanical perspectives because as said before, they have a wide range of functions in many fields. So what is a virtual four bar or V4B linkage? So the virtual four bar is similar to a regular four bar in terms of mechanism. It works the same way, but two of the bars are virtual and they're actually made up of belts. This diminishes the length constraint because the four bar itself actually condenses as it's used, which is very good as the V4B is active. And it also has many more degrees of freedom compared to a regular four bar. So how it works is you see the belt here that is locked onto a pulley and that pulley acts as a pivot. So it again works the same way as, because the four bar is a parallelogram. So opposite sides have to be parallel to each other. So you may be asking why it's better actually. So as the end effector goes up, because you're not connected by two like solid bars, it, it actually has more degrees of freedom. And instead of just going a certain amount of degrees, you can go back like behind this axis or plane, which for many activities is very helpful and what the end goal actually is. Here's how the motion of a virtual four bar looks. This is our CAD from League Champs, which utilized a claw attached to a virtual four bar for our robot. So regularly, you would only rotate one gear on a virtual four bar, and you can do it on either side. You can have a gear here that moves and a gear here that moves that are both powered by servos to have double the torque so that you can lift heavier loads at your end effector. So how it works is when you rotate this gear, this end effector, this claw, actually stays parallel to the ground, allowing for you to manipulate that inside of your robot to move it from one side of the robot to the other. Now let's move on to the coaxial virtual 4 bar, or a CV4B. So what does coaxial even mean? Coaxial is a term that means that essentially you have an axle where two mechanisms are actually sharing that axle for their axis of rotation. So in this case, we have the two servos on either side, which rotate that main axle, right? And that axle then rotates the pulley, which will in, the, uh, in turn rotate that entire bar and keep that end effector parallel. But what we're doing when we add a coaxial virtual floor bar is we add another servo, which I like to call the coaxial servo, which actually drives a gear which is directly attached to the coaxial axle instead of being dead axled as the as the normal pulleys are. So those normal pulleys are just put on a bearing and then attached to that axle. They're not actually attached to the axle so that when you rotate the axle, that pulley will move. So in this case with our coaxial axle, that gear that's being driven is actually directly attached to that axle. So when that moves, when we have a belt, right, when we move one end of the belt, we will also rotate the other end. So essentially, that will also tilt our end effector, allowing us to have more movement. And you might ask, why not just slap a servo onto that secondary axle, right? It seems like a pretty easy solution. But the problem with that is that it adds a lot of weight to that, to that front end effector and also causes problems with cable managing. So it's a lot simpler and energy efficient, along with saving space for you to just have a coaxial servo, which powers your tilt at the end. 
Now let's move on to a quick demonstration of how a coaxial virtual four bar would work. So as usual, we have our normal movement where when we rotate this gear that's driven by the bottom servos on our specific design, we get parallel movement of the end effector. But what if we want to tilt this claw? What we can do is we can actually rotate this, ser this servo gear here, which in turn rotates this gear, which as you can see is a pinion, meaning that is actually directly attached to the shaft. And since this shaft can freely move on this bearing here, it is really, really efficient for you to just rotate this gear and thus have movement on this axle, which is then transmitted through this belt. I know it seems a little complicated, but when you, when you build it for your first time, you'll see how simple it is. And once this belt transfers that rotation, this axle ends up turning. So to simulate that, we can just rotate this pulley real quick, and we can see that how all the links are done. So when we rotate this, you can see that black gear in the back. Oh, whoops. You can see that black gear on the back also rotating. So every motion is linked. And this allows us to have a precise movement. And in our specific design, what we do is we actually go vertical and then actually flip our entire claw over so that we can transfer our pixels to the other side of our robot. So what's the real use for these mechanisms? Let's go through one by one. We have a four bar linkage, a virtual four bar linkage, and a coaxial four bar linkage. So let's start with the four bar linkage. So many teams really use a four bar li linkage for lifting game elements really high up and keeping the gripper or the thing that you're using to pick up the game element parallel to the ground. So you can raise it from one part to another, kind of like a linear slide, but more compact and kind of easier to drive and not as finicky as using string. Um, we also have virtual four bar linkage. So this is my main use for transferring game elements throughout the robot while keeping the original orientation that you picked it up at. So you can keep everything in order. So if, for example, last season, you could pick up a power play cone and bring it into your robot and then transfer it to your depositor. And this year you can do the same thing. That's actually what we did at League Champs. We'd pick up the pixel and then deposit it using our depositor. And then the last one is our coaxial virtual four bar linkage. So how we use this is we have a full range of movement. So as I showed in the previous demonstration, we can actually flip over our claw to bring those pixels closer into the center of our robot allowing for easy depositing and transferring to our depositor. Now, you may ask, how did we, FTC22012, use a CP4B linkage in center stage this season? So the way we did it is in a two-part system, which actually both use coaxial virtual four bars, our intake and outtake. Our intake will actually flip over and pass over those pixels really efficiently to our outtake, which then flips over and drops those pixels onto the backboard at any angle that we want. It can be high or low while still keeping it parallel to the backboard. So this allows us for easy seamless transition between our intake and outtake compared to our previous one, which used only a virtual four bar because this uh, extended range of motion actually improves our transfer as we've seen. So you can also use this technique in your robot this season. And we'd love to see you post it in the comments down below. Now, you may ask, how do I design one? And that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to show you exactly how you can design your first virtual four bar or even coaxial virtual four bar. All right, so let's go on to our tutorial on how to actually build one. So here are the basic parts to a virtual four bar. So first of all, you have to decide if you're going to do coaxial or just a virtual four bar because coaxial and non-coaxial have a very big difference, one very big difference. This axle in the center will either be fixed or it will be able to freely rotate. So since we use coaxial, we have it freely, freely rotating. And the way we do this is we use a pattern spacer and then have a bearing that's locked in place there, which allows that axle to spin. So, and if you're not going to be doing coaxial, you can always just use just the sonic hub and just mount that there and that axle will be fixed. So once you have determined that, 
you can continue with the tutorial. Since coaxial and non-coaxial is going to be relatively the same, we're just going to start with the, we're just going to continue with the coaxial tutorial because the only thing that's different is just if the axle is fixed or if it's really rotatable, and of course the servo and the pinion that's there. So the next thing that you need are driver servos. So the driver servos have a gear attached to them, which then is attached to a gear which is on the primary axle so which is then also attached to this bar so this allows that the entire virtual four bar assembly to essentially rotate upwards as we can see in this little movement here we can essentially just rotate this entire thing upwards so the magic happens with this belt and pulley so we have a belt here and a pulley. So this pulley is freely rotating on this axle if it was coaxial. So since it's just fixed on this axle, it has the ability to pivot at any angle depending on how much this driver gear is turning. So these two are fixed onto this axle but are technically freely rotating. So then we have a belt which then attaches to this axle. A very important thing about this axle is that it is freely rotating. It needs to be freely rotating so that this pulley can rotate when this thing, when this entire assembly moves upwards or downwards. That's very important. That stays constant between a virtual four bar and a coaxial virtual four bar. So since we have a belt here, as my team member before explained, the belt locks onto the pulley and doesn't let it slip. So when you rotate this bar, this pulley must also follow in rotation, right? Which also means that this uh, belt will also rotate and pull this one up while also maintaining the parallel claw. Or in this case, we have a claw, but you could really have anything here. So that maintains that parallel. So that's our, our virtual four bar. Now, what makes it really coaxial? We want we want this axis to be able to tilt, and currently we don't have any way of doing that. But let's think about this for a second. When we rotate this axle, what happens? Because currently, what, when you rotate this gear, since this gear isn't c connected to this axle completely, it's just dead axled, right? It can freely rotate on it. It's not really moving this axle, so this axle is stationary. So what happens when you rotate it? That's where the magic happens. When we rotate this axle, this pulley will rotate that way, right? It'll rotate clockwise, right? If we rotate this axle clockwise, it'll rotate clockwise. And that will also make this entire belt rotate clockwise. And what that ends up happening is that this pulley will also rotate clockwise. And since this pulley is directly connected to our claw, when we rotate this pulley, right here, when you rotate, you rotate, oh, sorry, whoops. When you rotate this pulley right here, what we get is the claw rotating. And you can see that this axle has to rotate. This primary axle over here, it has to rotate when you rotate this pulley because it's linked by the pull it's linked by the belt, right? So we have that rotation. And then since this like the way we really want to drive this is with the servo, right? So we need to somehow abstract away the motion of that axle into a servo. So the way we do that at least in our design, is we have a pinion gear here, which is essentially just set screwed onto this axle, which is then meshed with this gear, which is then on a servo. So basically, this servo just rotates this axle. It's that simple. It's just rotating that axle. But the magic is with the belt. In all virtual four bars, the magic is with the belt. And that allows this entire claw to tilt, even without even moving the servo at all. Drive servos don't even need to move. Just the coaxial servo moves, and we have a rotating claw. So let's go review real quick. We have to have drive servos. These drive servos allow us to have our virtual four bar. And then we have our coaxial servo, which allows for our coaxial movement, or our tilt on our claw. So let's go into some tips and tricks on building your virtual four bar. Always make sure to have your belts while making this entire stack, right? Because you have to stack all these parts on this axle. So make sure that you don't forget to put your belts there. 
because we went through that that's not really fun because you have to take apart everything again and put the belts back on so remember to do that and also remember to have spacers everywhere because if there's no spacers those parts can just wobble anywhere they want and if you don't want to use spacers try using some kind of like hub that's set screwed on or like try to find ways to keep stuff fixed in position otherwise what can happen is in the middle of a competition one nudge and that axle has lost all of its pieces and that's not very good so you have to make sure of that and also make sure that when you're programming this uh, when you're programming this assembly that these servos are spinning in opposite directions this servo and this servo need to be spinning in opposite directions if they're not spinning in opposite directions you'll actually fight each other because they're on opposite sides right so if they're not spinning in opposite directions they'll fight each other and eventually either break your servo or break your entire virtual four bar or coaxial virtual four bar that you work so hard on so those are our tips and tricks for building a coaxial virtual four bar and we hope this helps you in this season and the many more that will come after this and we hope that this helps you on your journey to making a coaxial virtual four bar and now before you leave, really quick, we'd like to let you know that we're going to make a part two of this video that's focused primarily on coding, like our kinematics algorithms and our coding for all of this mechanism. And we're also going to be releasing a V4B parametric generator so you can make these entire files, like these entire assemblies, just off of setting parameters in our onshape file. So be sure to stay tuned for that, and we hope to see you next time and have fun in your journey.